study this, things that we have to look at as, as a provider and seeing this and thinking about this is like if, if a government entity goes in and puts 24 conduits in, could, for example, I come in and lease all 24 to preclude, because if you're doing like Don was talking about yeah. where there's no um, could you monopolize you know, yes, the time? Five years or ten years. <coughs> what well, lockup? Could, could I monopolize it? Could I come in and could I throw rather, you know, let's say that they charge a um, dollar a foot a year to lease the fire, the lease the capacity on the thing? Could I come in and put my own conduit in for a fixed price yeah. and not have to pay that? Um, another <laughs> another thought that I would have was if if they put in, you know. Whatever resource we have is going to be limited. So if they put in, let's say they put in four conduits, and the, the telephone goes into one, we go into one, and we put in a 288 fiber, and um, the city puts street lights in one, and they put the electric in the other one. So now they're all filled up. Then somebody, a competitor comes in and needs fiber access. Could the fact that I'm using that conduit force me you know, almost in a common carrier manner to have to <coughs> lease 10 fibers to a competitor. I mean, these yeah, are the kinds yeah. of things that we think about. Is, you know, I wouldn't you want to go in there. Your mind of like... <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's not, it's not... No, 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 I think it is, I mean, I think these are important questions about... Yeah. Or, or well, the other example is if a city is trying to operate its own government-owned network right, and right. we're there and, and we have seen where the city practices discriminatory, no, I thought about you know, that. and they're, we're not giving equal treatment. Yeah, or the city decides to go into the internet business. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, I, I mean, at that point, I would say, I would rather not go in on that project with them, and I would go by myself <clears throat> yeah. and clutter up the, the landscape and not be part of it, you know, if I had to give up, you know, my independence. So I think those are good questions, like what are the protections that would be in place if people are going to sign up for these sorts of partnerships? I mean, that, I mean that's what you're talking about. You're talking about contracts and partnerships here over a period of time. And, you know, what happens if, or I was thinking about these issues. I was thinking about both the pricing issue and I was thinking about, you know, if 10 years down the road, uh, you know, different administration in a community and they decide to change the rules of the game and they say, no, nope, we don't want to do business with, you know, private providers anymore. We want to do our own thing and we're going to make it very uncomfortable or we're going to raise rates or we're going to do whatever. You know, this is a question about, you know, and I think it gets to that whole, whole issue of, uh, how you have protections in place for the people you're doing business with. And so I think that, that is a, a question for your committee to look at. Are there, are there some models with that that, that help protect um, each side, frankly, from having bad things happen? And some of the other things I was looking at is, um, since so much of this stuff is long-term payback, you know, we want to be able to have long-term pricing on it, and not, not, you know, week to week or driving in here. I was listening to uh, Sirius Radio, and they were saying, "Do you have a, do you have a high-interest loan that you have to make daily payments on?" And I'm going, Thank "Oh you. my God!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I was thinking about that, and I thought, "Whoa, yeah, that's where we can." But then the other things, um, more practical stuff, like who locates the facility? Is it? Is it the city, you know, yeah. say if the city's putting it in, is the city or is each party responsible? And if the city's supposed to locate it and they don't, and it gets cut off, then who has the liability? Do we all, we just, you know, those are things that need to be spelled out. And um, and then, who does the maintenance on it? If uh, the city puts one in and they cross uh, Highway 59, and MnDOT comes through and says, we're gonna dig six feet down, and uh, record the, the street, and it's all, you know, it's all jumbled up and gets gets moved up, so it's not usable. Then, you know, how how do we deal with that? And who's who's supposed to be out there? Who has crew out there that's standing watching their pens, their their stuff? And then, the further part of the maintenance is who 
who's responsible for the bolts, maintaining the bolts, mm -hmm. and, and make sure the covers are bolted on, and, and the pedestals. Because you go through some towns and you look and everything's neat as a pin. And you go through other towns and you'll see, you'll see um, amplifiers that are hanging, you know, you wonder how they're, 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 they're staying in the air and plant that looks like it's a thousand years old and hasn't been maintained at all. And, and uh, pedestals, there's, I, I won't speak for Andy, uh, but there's, a, there's one pedestal in Stillwater where we have a condominium that we've been there for eight years now and every single year I go around this curb and there's this pedestal and it looks like it's been blown up. And every year it's fixed and every year it gets hit again. And so you think that they would figure something out, but it looks like it got blown it up concrete, again. So I know that's kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I know it, but anyway, those are the, kind, the yeah. types of things that we need to, to address.